Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are starting a new series on optical simulations using ComSol Multiphysics. This will be an end-to-end -end series, meaning we'll be talking about ComSol simulation demonstrations as well as the underlying theory. The purpose of making this session end-to-end -end is to make you understand about the physics and the physical significance of each and every simulation we talk about. It will help you to understand the optical simulations and it will help you to develop your own simulation. So the entire purpose is making you comfortable with optical simulation. We are working on different simulations, we are learning new things and I hope that I will be able to share the knowledge which we are gaining to make this particular series. We start with a simple simulation that is optical scattering on a gold nanoparticle. This particular simulation is taken from the application library of ComSol. My contribution is to, to tell you more about the simulation which has not been told in this particular application library. Initially, let me talk about the schematic of this and the strategy of this particular simulation. So ComSol has taken one fourth of the sphere to solve this particular problem. The concept is when we are working with spherical object, we are dealing with the scattering on a spherical object. Due to the symmetry of the sphere, we can actually solve for one fourth or even one eighth of the entire sphere. And because same thing will be repeated due to the symmetry so you don't need to solve for the entire sphere it will actually save your time so this is a good simulation strategy then that means whenever you have a symmetry then you will break down it into smaller pieces and do your simulation so this is the object and uh, a light is incidenting on top of this object and we are basically solving for the scattered field so what is a scattered field and what is the total field so if you just imagine there is a sphere and the light is incidenting from an external source so when the light falls or incidenting on top of the gold surface then what happens suppose let me draw so this is the optical source from which the external light is coming k indicates the propagation direction and e indicates the electric field direction so you know in an electromagnetic wave you have electric field and magnetic field which are situated in a mutually perpendicular directions and there is a propagation direction of the wave so wave is propagating from in this direction so when light falls on top of this surface so it does irregular reflections or you you, you call it scattering so this scattered light then may be interfered with the incident light and if you take combination of the scattered light and the incident light, then you'll be getting the total field. But in this case, we are actually interested to look at the scattered light. That means after incidenting on the surface, whichever is coming out, we are basically studying this and that is what is called the scattered field. And we'll be solving this. For this particular simulation, let us go to the console interface initially. <clears throat> I have taken the file which is there in the application library, but I will be explaining each and every step. So I will be demonstrat demonstrating few of the steps so that it becomes easier to comprehend. So initially, let me talk about the parameters which they have taken. So this R0 is nothing but the radius of the particle or the spherical particle. This LDI is the wavelength of the incident light. So we'll be solving for a range of wavelength because we want to see where exactly the scattering is more. That's why the solution will be for a range of wavelength and how exactly the range is to be taken. I'll be talking about it. Actually, they have solved for the parametric sweep. If you go to the parametric sweep, you can see they have they have they have varied the wavelengths from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometers so basically we are looking into scattering at different wavelengths from 400 to 700 with an interval of 300 by 3 that means 30 that means 10 nanometer now i go to the parameter other parameters 
So T air is the thickness of the air that is being taken for the simulation. So if you look at the geometry initially, this is what the geometry is. If we, if we look at the solid surface, just a minute, yeah. So this is the geometry. So this is the one fourth of the entire sphere. How to, how to make this uh, particular geometry, I'll be demonstrating for, for your help. But initially, this, this, the smaller part is the gold nanoparticle and then we have a layer that is for the air so that layer represents the aerial space and the outermost layer that means this particular layer it represents the PML that means perfectly matched layer I have already made a separate video on perfectly matched layer what is a perfectly matched layer and why exactly we use it for optical simulation. So in very simple and layman terminology, we are expecting that the light, whichever is falling here, that is not being scattered and coming back. So PML is not allowing to scatter back any kind of light source. That means if a light goes from here to here, there will be no scattering back and this is what PML is doing. Now the first thing is how to make the geometry. So let me demonstrate it how to make the geometry. So I go to geometry, right click on the geometry, take one sphere and I know the radius of the sphere will be R0 because there are three layers and how to implement layers I am explaining here. I have another video on making layers i'll be putting the link in the description box so the entire radius would be r0 plus t air so t air has been defined in the parameter section and t that means thickness of pml so that will be the entire sphere but when we make this sphere there are no layers and that is why we need to activate the option layer here so there will be three layers, one will be at T air and another will be at T PML. That means two boundaries in between and if you have two boundaries in between it will make three sections. Now if I build here, you can see there are <coughs> the inside smaller one represents the spherical gold nanoparticle. First layer represents the aerial space. And the outermost layer represents the PML. Now the idea is we are not solving it for the entire sphere. We are solving one fourth of it and how to do that. For that particular one, they have taken a particular block and they have actually taken the dimension of the block as twice of the entire this R0 plus T air plus t pml so let us define it to into this part i have just copied and pasted and all will be equal so i just copy it and paste for the depth and the height it will be at the corner negative of the total dimension so yeah not this one negative of R0 this part R0 I copy it and I paste it here yeah so if I click on build selected you can see this kind of I will just show you yeah so I have created a block like this now if you see if you look at the boolean boolean operation if i take intersection of this block and this sphere i'll be gaining this part the one fourth of the desired spherical part and i'll be doing the same i go to geometry uh, go to boolean and partitions i click intersection you can see <coughs> these two objects has to be taken in the intersection and i click on build selected so after i do it you can see only this part has been left and we are basically trying to use this for the simulation so 
if you see here this is the part we have created this particular part so in this section i showed you how to create this simple geometry because the people who are doing uh, who are new to comsol for them it will be difficult to even make this particular geometry and that's why i have demonstrated it so now let me go back to the material so you can see in material we need to take two materials because we have aerial space and we have the gold material so air is here and gold this this part is the gold gold nanoparticle and when we go to electromagnetic waves then we have the background light so you can see in the electromagnetic wave as i have mentioned earlier we are solving for the scattered field when you go to the electromagnetic waves you can see there are there is a drop down menu in the drop down there are two options one is full field and the other is scattered field the comsol has taken the scattered field because we are solving for the scattered light again and again i'm telling the full field means when you have interference between the incident and the reflected light that means you are solving for the total field but when we are only working with the scattered light that is actually the scattered field and as we have mentioned in the schematic we had a background light that was coming and incident incidenting on top of the surface so this background light source has been defined here by this particular equation you can see here that the propagation direction is the x direction and the polarization direction is taken in the z direction so this is the direction z axis so if i show you here so this direction represents the polarization direction and the x direction represents the propagation direction of the light so au has been taken here so if you go to the material library there will be multiple au option but in this case they have taken au and in the bracket you can see in the parenthesis they have written some paper name that is uh, 1998 paper by brendel and this is borman so this is a brendel borman model so this is the model for so for calculating the physical properties of gold materials and those physical properties like refractive index and all has been taken from that particular paper if you just search this paper on internet and you'll see that whatever model they have shown in their paper that has been taken in this particular material library so i'll just show you they have <clears throat> taken the refractive index and the refractive index has been calculated by this particular equations and those equations are defined in this particular paper and that's why this material is renamed like this in the default console option so i talked about the material why this particular material is taken i talked about the background field which they have taken now i will be talking about the wave equation and the properties so if you go here you can see in the wave equation electric one electric displacement field model in this case they have chosen the refractive index you have the liberty to choose all the options like uh, there might be multiple model by which you are calculating your refractive index there because refractive index might be say a function of other properties there are multiple models like uh, drude lorange model divide dispersion law model those models can be used for your simulation and in that case you have to choose that option but in this particular case that is uh, done by this particular paper this 1998 paper uh, we need a refractive index and that is why the refractive index option has been taken and you can see in the refractive index the uh, uh, the epsilon r that is the permittivity of the material is uh, is is given as the square of n minus i k where n minus i k is the complex refractive index of the material so the refractive index of the material has been equated or in a layman language i can say 
the permittivity has been calculated from the relative uh, uh, from the complex refractive index and again the complex refractive index has been taken from the model given by the paper so this is the thing uh, we need to understand if we are exploring the simulation in detail i hope this particular information will help you and now i go to the perfect electric conductor this is not important uh, then the most important part is the scattering boundary condition again i am telling we are solving for the scattered field and hence when you solve for the scattered field you need to opt for this boundary condition how to opt for it i'll show you here so if you right click on the electromagnetic option you'll be seeing there is an option of scattered scattering boundary condition so you have to choose this option and they have chosen this option and they have selected the outer surface or the gold surface and this is the logic they have two symmetry planes one is pec and other is pmc so those two planes are this so if you go to their pdf file they have clearly defined which one is their pec and which one is their pmc i'll show you somewhere they have written about that pec and pmc let me search pec yeah so they have they have clearly told you have to set the pc symmetry plane on the boundaries normal to the background electric field so pc is in the direction that is normal to the background electric field so let us see which one is pc so this is the pac so this should be normal to the background electric field so the background electric field was taken along z direction so you can see this is the z direction and this plane is normal to that z direction and the same thing they have told in their pdf file and pmc in which direction pmc should be taken parallel to the background electric field polarization direction so the polarization direction was again the z direction so the plane should be parallel to that so the pmc you can see this pmc this particular plane is parallel to this z direction and that is what is mentioned in this particular pdf file so the pdf file which comsol provides is very important and we have to follow each and every direction so according to that direction we have to take these two planes and this is the requirement of the simulation i have mentioned uh, which planes to be chosen as pc and pmc now how to choose this pc and pmc you have to right click here you can see there are options of symmetry plane you, you need to go for the symmetry plane and in the symmetry plane you have a drop down menu and from the drop down menu you can choose whether it is pec or pmc according to that you can choose your boundaries which has been chosen already here now the most important part is the far field domain far field domain means the domain in which you are solving for your scattering you need to look at the electric field in a particular domain where after it gets scattered from the surface and this is nothing but the aerial space which you have taken so this is the aerial space the rest is the PML so this part is your far field domain so this is what it is and after that you, we are solving basically for the wavelength domain we need to take a study under study we need to go for the wavelength domain and we are solving for a parametric sweep I have already talked about it in the parametric sweep we are solving in a range from 400 to 700 uh, because in this range we want to see the nature of the scattering we, we we did not talk about the important point that is a perfectly matched layer but uh, how to take that perfectly matched layer so for that you need to go to i'll just show here just for the demonstration purpose you need to go to definition right click there and you'll see there is an option of perfectly matched layer once you click there 
you will be getting the artificial domain and the perfectly matched layer and you need to choose that this part is your perfectly matched layer and the same has been chosen here if you see perfectly matched layer this this outer part is your perfectly matched layer now another thing why this integration and other things are important because i'll show you in the variable if you see uh, they have actually calculated this n gold as a i mean in surface average integration around the gold particle if you see this intl is nothing but the integration which they have taken and this no this is a volume integration as i can see so in this particular nanoparticle they have taken an integration and when they are defining the variables they have taken an integration over it and divided it by the if you can see divided it by the pi r cube by 3 why pi r cube by 3 because the total volume of the sphere is 4 third pi r cube we are taking one fourth of it and 4 third pi r cube by 4 is 1 third pi r cube and that is the thing they have taken so they have taken a volumetric average of the property uh, that means n gold and because of that this integration was necessary again for the integration you, you need to go to definition you need to right click option you have non-local coupling option from there you can take those integrations so i have mentioned this in my previous videos i will be putting all the links in the description box and i hope it will help you so after everything is done then you need to go to the parametric sweep and you need to click on compute i have already computed so you can see this is how the scattered field looks like this is the electric field uh, this is the loss profile the resistive losses they have also solved for the scattered field this is different i'll show you different global plots they have made to look at the losses absorption and all i'll be making a follow-up video to talk about it but for the time being you just i just want to inform that this part is the heat loss and this i gold heat loss has been defined in the variable section so this is the heat loss so why it is the heat loss and how exactly they are calculating from the simulation for that we need to make a theory video and i'll be making a theory video on it but for the time being just wanted to show you so this is this is how the loss is and you can see in gold nanoparticle at this position you have the maximum loss and for other wavelength the loss is minimum so maximum has been shown at somewhere at 500 nanometer or 520 nanometer and if you remember in uv visible spectroscopy also we see absorption at this particular location so the simulation is well aligned with the physical observation which we see in our daily experimentation so today i'm stopping here i'll be making follow-up videos on this optical scattering to make more insights into it uh, if these videos are helpful kindly share our videos and subscribe to our channel